everybody, welcome back to the channel in another episode of Inheritance. So, uh, we got the Halopolis uh, underway, being repaired. We got the Griffin not quite back yet from being pasted a few episodes ago. Uh, it's still got six days to go. I thought about um, running the six days out and then seeing what we got, what we can do with it. But I think I want to take a mission here before we do that. So if we go to the command center, we've got a one and a half skull here. It's a escort mission in the desert. And our escorts are usually half decent salvage, half decent payout, and usually relatively easy because you're only facing one group of enemies at a time. Uh, unless you get like, you know, two lances off the start or something like that, you should pretty much be okay. So I don't think we're going to get that with this because it's one and a half skulls, but you never know. So let's negotiate this sucker. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's have a look in the barracks. I don't know if we did check our pilots at the end of last episode. I don't think we did. Yeah, so we're going to have a quick look through Standing here to by. see if we can raise some skills up. Let's get Killjoy's gunnery up by Three one more. Uh, Mothman, you still going. Uh, Puka, you're still going. You're going to have a long time, long wait before you can get something else up, that's for sure. All right, let's go to the command center. Hey, Commander. Now, uh, let's get right into this. Um, yeah, we're going to go full salvage on this. 301,000 still pretty good payout. Now, we're down to three mechs and two vehicles for this. I think we'll be fine. Um, but we'll see. Let's just deploy and get it done. Command interface initiated. All right, here we go. Oh, it's been a while since we've been on this map as well. Nice. Um, we got to bring the convoy down to there, correct? Wow, it's been like a really long time since I've been on this map, or has it? No, right, because we've done the attack base here, but we haven't been down in this section for quite some time. Um, so the capture zone... I guess they don't have a start lance. Which could be a good thing or a bad thing. So, if the vehicles are getting out here... Wait, where are they leaving? Are they being evac down there? I can't see where the dropship would land then. Well, screw it. Let's just deploy here. Uh, I better do this. There we go. Excellent. Let's get this sucker started. We're just going to brace here. Roger that. Boom. Alright, so there's the vehicles. Okay, our pathway's down this way. And over here. Okay, so it's not so bad. Right, that that makes sense. Yeah, it's been like it's been so long. Like some of these maps, I played on a variety of very similar maps for so long that I just forget how some of these play out. Okay. Right, because I guess in earlier Battletech, this was like the escort mission. You would come up here, go here, and then down and over to there. And then there was the intercept convoy, and you start up here, and you got to come down and intercept them before they get out here. Right, that makes sense. Waiting for it's been quite a while. All right, I don't, um, hmm. I think we're going to reserve. So they got an Urban Mech LRM. Crapple Master X, Chameleon, it's 40 tons, and a Vindicator. That's not, we got Vindicator parts, don't we? I know we faced the Vindicator already. I can't remember if we got any parts, though. Um, that's not actually not a bad upgrade. It's 45 tons, so... Now, let's reserve. So I just posted a... Um, you guys have probably have already seen it by now, but I posted a uh, poll on my uh, channel again talking about, uh, we're going to reserve again, talking about um, uh, whether you guys like the way that elementals are slash the stand, ooh, you got a uh, big artillery piece. Yikes, that hit hard. Elementals slash inner sphere standards oh, are implemented off. in the game. Losing armor. Um, so I'm interested to see what people think about it. Like, I, I, I'm up in the air, right? Like, 
I love the fact that they're in the game. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great that they're in the game. I think it's one of those units that's just very, very interesting. So that was a one-shot. He's got two large heavy chem lasers though, so he's got to go down. We gotta, we gotta kill this guy fast. Yes. Waiting for the uh, beacon here. We didn't get it. That's fine. I'm here. You are here. Just gonna roll up here, take a shot at him. Um, so I love the fact that they're in the game. I just don't like the rules around them currently. Um, I think. Ooh, that's not good for him. Didn't expect that. Look at this. I love how it just. He's just like. He's melting. It's like a molten vindicator. That should seal his armor. Uh, let's uh, reserve you, I think. Until we get the rest of my guys moved up here. Yes, Commander. Alright, Mothman Prophecies. Let's get up here and drop a couple of AC5s Friendly. on this guy's ass. So I've been thinking a lot about both melee, because I've been quote-unquote bitching about melee. I mean, no one's really said that, but... I, that's, I have been, honestly. I'm not going to say I haven't been. I've been kind of bitching about melee. And it's not really melee in general. I think it's it's the that's charge cool. attacks. I'm trying to decide what it is that's really been bothering me about it. On the move. And I think it's cool. really only the charge attacks. I think it's the way that it's implemented. I think charge attacks need to go. As much as they're interesting, um, they're just not realistic enough for me to, to, to buy them, right? To buy into the whole charge and here's why like let's just think about it for a second so we had the mongoose charge um the uh shadow hawk when it went down and Good i like i'm not complaining about the way the a the ai uses it um because it's using it to its right, maximum commander. benefit right it had the best chance to move in and, and attack me with melee so it took it i i'm 100 percent fine with that 100 percent respect the fact that that's what they did I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the way that it, the way that the rule set Damage? for melee Mine. and Minimal stuff is implemented. Um, yes, Commander. So I guess I don't know what I'm trying to say here. It's like if you think about it for a second. And I, the, I have on my drive. My drive. I got a longer drive home now because I gotta go on the highway and everything. My they, we moved offices to um, across the uh, the bay from where I, I normally worked. Um, but anyway. Um, so I had a lot of time to think about it, and my thought was this. It's like, if you think about, like, let's take like, the Mongoose, for instance, that could probably top out at, what, 160, 180 kilometers an hour, easy. Um, so 160, if you don't, guys know, if you guys don't know, like, the metric system, uh, kilometers an hour. Um, so uh, about uh, 160 kilometers an hour is 100 miles an hour, right? So... You know, 160 kilometers an hour, this thing is moving. Good to go. And it weighs 25 tons. And it is slamming into, like, another mech. Let's say, for instance, this time it's the Griffin. 40-ton mech, right? And it's hitting it at full speed in a charge attack. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a car um, traveling at high speed and ever hit anything. Could you imagine hitting something at 160 kilometers an hour, right? 100 miles an hour, which is more than speed limit on a highway, right? There's a reason why there's a speed limit on the highway, right? So you hit it at 100 um, uh, miles or 160 kilometers an hour. I don't... Oh my God, you blew up your own guy. You, <laughs> with an SRM, f oh my god. Well, that was bad. Well, we're losing some money off this one. Alright. Oh. Anyway, so, that's part of my, my problem with it. I mean, at first it was the, you know, oh, oh no, here comes the Jenner at full speed, and it comes, like, from in front of my unit, kind of just step, steps around behind it and hits it from behind yes, doing on. maximum damage it's like how can you go full speed and do a 180 degree turn like that 
All right. and charge me from behind. It's just not possible, which is why I was saying if you're going to do implement the charge attacks, have it only from... Nice. Excellent. Have it only from, like, the direct line that you can trace to your opponent, right? So if you can trace a line directly to your opponent, that's the area that you can charge in. But then, like... Really, your only drawback of charging an opponent is the fact that you're losing a little bit of stability. And it really isn't a lot of stability. I mean, yeah, like the way that the enemy is generally doing it right now is they're, they're charging up and they're like, you know, getting right in, um, like right up behind me and then exposing their back to the rest of my units and they die because they, they get killed from behind, right? Um, so... As far as working as intended goes, I mean, I guess it kind of is, but it just puts them in such a horrible position. Because think about it, and I and I and I made this comment on one of the comments on the uh, on that on that uh, Griffin being knocked over video. It's um, would you, as a twenty-five ton mech pilot, would you charge in to attempt to knock another mech over, knowing that you're going to be completely off balance and having your back to the enemy, right? Who has a half decent amount of firepower to wipe you out instantly? Would you do it? Would you? I mean, if I guess if you were a fanatic, you might. You might not even care, right? It wouldn't even be an option. You would just go ahead and do it without even thinking, right? But most mech pilots are like, you know, if they're mercenaries, they're like, I, I'm, why would I sacrifice my mech? At, at what point would I sacrifice my, you know, two and a half million dollar mech? on an idiotic move like that, right? While tactically, in game terms, tactically, it makes perfect sense. Commander? And 100%, like, if, it, if you're just thinking of game terms, sure, no problems with it. AI did exactly what it should have done in that situation. I think any player probably may have done the same thing, especially if you had a really good chance to hit. Uh, let's go ahead and use a sensor lock on this guy, too. Might as well. Give a bit better chance to hit with machine guns. Here we go. Firing everything I've got. So it makes sense, but from a you know a realistic standpoint, it really okay. doesn't make any sense at all. Like there was, I, I, I can't think of any pilot that would do it unless they were a fanatic, right? Because you're basically well, sacrificing yourself well, at that point. You know, hoping that nothing bad happens. Now, should I fire over these guys, knowing how bad? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up to this guy. That gives me a really good chance to hit. Let's see if we can leg him. And I should probably go with Slug. All right. Oh, not quite enough. That looked like I can't believe that guy's not bailing out either. Orders? His mech is like melting down around him. Uh, let's get you to here. Moving to position. Do not miss on this, please. You're shooting right past our guy here. 28. 50. I'm only going to shoot one. See if we get it. Knowledge. There we go. Excellent. Star removed. Salvage. Thank you. Waiting for orders. So yeah, the way that melee is, like the charge attack. I think. If, okay, so if I if I was going to redo melee, because I mean, let's face it, it's one thing to bitch about stuff, right? But if you're going to bitch about stuff, make a suggestion to how you can change it, right? And I was I was thinking about that while I was driving. Like, yeah, you know, if I'm going to complain about a, a mechanic. You need to have an alternative. You just can't, like, say, I don't like it and it should be out of the game or whatever. So, if I was going to change melee to start, what I would probably do... Now, let's raker this guy. Um, let's just shoot him. Not bad. Leg shot. What I would do is I would remove the, uh, the charge attack unless you could have it so that they only charge directly at the opponent. Number two, um, the charge attack would have I'm to be okay. dependent on weight. So if you're hitting an object that weighs twice as much as you, you can't knock it over. You can do a, st a fair bit of stability, but can't knock it over just because of the sheer weight of it. Um, and also three, the more you travel, uh, the more chance your pilot has of being severely wounded. So if you wish to charge, you may go ahead and do so, but just keep in mind that you may knock your ass out, right? Your pilot could be out for the match if it's because if you think about it, a 20 ton mech traveling like if it's going really fast, like a 200 kilometers an hour slamming into an atlas, you're pretty much guaranteed of putting your yourself out of cold. 
right? There isn't much that could hold you back in a cockpit, short of the entire cockpit um, being, you know, made of gel or something like that, where you were like encased in some kind of, um, you know, gel f like foam or something, so that when it did, when you did hit, you were completely um, cushioned from the blow. But short of that, I can't see any way that you wouldn't be, have your ass knocked out. Like even even race car drivers that that take a spill at 200 kilometers an hour, or like you know, don't necessarily uh, just get up and go, "Wow, that was uh, that was a little bit of a tough crash, eh?" Okay, let's get into here. No shooting, just running. So you would have to be like the you know, it would have to be either direct direct strike on an enemy that has a possibility of like doing a lot of wounds to you. Nice. Um, Commander? But yeah, I mean, I mean, you could massage the charge dynamics so that it did, um, it balances out, it balances it out a little bit better. So you could do it um, and do like, cause a fair bit of damage to the enemy, but you're also Take risking forward. damage to yourself. And then you'd have to, I don't know how you would implement that with the AI. It makes the programming the AI and what they're going to do a little trickier, but I, I still think that that's probably the best way to do. And then what I would do to balance out the fact that you've lost the charge attacks is um, change the way you do uh, punch and kick attacks. So you can still punch and kick, but add them like they do, a have them do a little bit more stability damage, right? Um, uh, and then um, depending on how far you travel, you have a less, like even lesser chance to hit with the melee attacks. So like for instance, let's say you're going 160 kilometers an hour, you travel like 10, 10 hexes across the board and you go to punch somebody. Well, it would be a lot less chance to hit than it would be if you, let's say, only traveled three hexes and then punch somebody, right? Um, and then when you have weapons, like let's say you add a weapon to that, the weapon itself, um, when it travels a far distance, um, you still have a good chance to hit, which would, meaning if you're gonna do a melee mech, it's probably a good idea to have some kind of weapon. Because if you think about it, running up to somebody from a long distance at full speed, it's hard to connect with a punch. But if you've got a weapon, it's a lot easier to connect because of a wide swing, right? You have a lot more um, give to be able to make contact with somebody, right? So I would make it easier to hit with weapons, um, you know, at distances when they're moving. Um, and then harder with punch and kicks. So the closer you are, the better off you are, the more stability damage you can do to the opponent, the more physical damage. Uh, so that's what I would do with that, I think. I think that would probably balance melee out a little bit more. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of other tweaks you can do. Um, but it would just make, you know, if you're going to do a melee mech, so like a hatchetman, for instance, if it had speed, right, could do a lot more damage over distance than it could if it was like, just moving really slowly and, and swinging at somebody, right? Uh, because then you've got the, the speed and the force of the blow that would, um, like the speed added to the force of the blow um, that would increase the damage. And then for something like elementals, like I was thinking about what would, like, how would you implement elementals in the game to make them a little more effective than what they are now? And my thought was, because right now, like, I mean, you, you've seen it when you, when we, we've been fighting the elementals, like always the last unit in the map board because it moves so damn slow, and you know, um, it really doesn't do anything. Does a little bit of damage here, there. Yeah, okay, it killed one of my vehicles um, a while back, and that was just my stupidity, me being lazy, because I just wanted to get it kill killed and I was just being super lazy with it but I shouldn't have lost the vehicle by any stretch of the imagination On completely my, my fault I accept responsibility for it but like there's no way that uh, like that elemental should kill a vehicle so in order to make it more deadly it's got to get into battle faster so you know my my thought was and I mentioned this before that maybe they've got a cling ability where well these guys are back here you guys are out of luck man Clint Scorpion and Commando Giving it the cling ability, I think, would be good. You know, um, being able to cling on to other uh, mechs or vehicles as it's going by to be able to increase its speed. But then I thought that's probably really, really tricky to program. Like I couldn't imagine how much programming it would take to to figure that out, right? 
So I'm like, what what could you do to make it a little easier? And I'm like, well, why don't you just give them like, you know, because right now we've got the ability to um, do the, um, you know, uh, one hex kind of focused movement where we can move off of a, an object that's, um, um, like if we, if you spawn in in a bad terrain, you can move one hex to get off the bad terrain, right? So we're able to do that now. So what you could do is give the elements, elementals and the inner sphere standards I'm ready. A, a skill like, you know, like forced march or something that like that, Rolling. that takes away their ability to fire that turn, but doubles their movement speed. So they were able to get into battle quicker, oh, right? So the first thing that the, the unit would look for is, oh, no. do I have the ability to attack if I attack anybody if I move? And if, it, if it's no, then it immediately goes into a forced march situation and moves towards the nearest enemy or whichever enemy it's going towards. So it can close the distance, right? Um, and that way, you know, it'll get into battle faster and it'll even be more of a threat, right? Because it could like force march straight into a group of your guys and then attack the next turn if you don't kill it, right? Still make it really hard to hit, right? Um, and then I was also thinking, what else could you do to make it a little more deadly at range? Well, one thing you could do is, you know, give it a, uh, the ability to carry uh, quote unquote bolt on weapons. So like, let's say you've got an inner sphere standard team and let's say they've got plasma rifles and SRMs or something, right? Well, the random bolt-on for them might end up being a mortar, let's say. So one of the four units, one of the four elementals carries the mortar and the other three units Commander? are, um, let's just do this. The other, the other three units are carrying the ammunition. Each one carries, let's say, five rounds or four rounds or something for the mortar. Um, and they all carry, like, each one just rolls randomly for a variety of the mortar ammunition. So one might be acid, one might be incendiary, one might be standard, smoke, could be anything, right? So while they're moving in at a distance, they could also be using long-range weapons that have some kind of effect on the enemy. So, you know, you might end up with a mortar squad that, you know, is fighting from a distance, firing its mortar until it gets close enough that it can actually uh, start using its, its close-range uh, weapons, you know? And you give it, you don't have to give it a ton amount, like a tons of ammo. Like, you know, maybe 10, like, you know, I don't know, between like 8 and eight and 12 rounds or something like that. Um, Commander? All right, now we got to decide... Because these guys can't really... Can they get up this hill? They might be able to. We're going to head up that hill. Right? So you got to... You know, you kind of give them the ability to um, fire like fire a distance. Um, and, and the ability to basically sprint, right? To get up to you faster. Uh, let's sensor lock this guy because he's moved already and why not? I've got a sensor lock. So it's Anubis, eh? All right. Affirmative. Anyway, so that might make the elementals a little more dangerous, right? Good to go. The ability to sprint um, and giving them some ranged weapons that they can use against us, right? <clears throat> I think that would probably help help them out a bit. But the biggest drawback of elementals is movement, right? It's just they're so slow. Hey. And I know if, I don't know if anybody's actually tried an elemental start because I have, and man, it is unless you choose a mech. Um, as you know your option at the very very beginning it's painfully slow to get anywhere with that with that start it's just so tough right and it just turns you off like i started with a hunchback on one of those playthroughs and it just really it's really tough so i mean if you like a challenge go for it i'm not saying you know it's that terrible but Understood. like Move it's fast. As far as I'm concerned, it's unplayable Good simply job. because you can't Objective get to the secure. enemy in any reasonable amount of time. You have to expect to be there for the long haul, right? You, you're going to be there for a long time. Um, and then, of course, your limited ammo is, is a bit of a nightmare. So I think they should all, like all the elementals should default to having some kind of energy weapon. So at least, like, even if, even if they've all just got small lasers or micro lasers small as backup weapons or a secondary weapon, then um, I'm just going to brace here for a second. Wait for everybody else to get up here and then uh, we'll drop some heat as well. 
but yeah, it's just it's just frustratingly painful, you know. And I mean, really, the the where the elementals really shine is being able to get on on top of enemy armor, right? If you're able to get on top of enemy armor, you can do a lot of like in close hey, damage. And I'm 100% behind that, right? That so, um, but it's it's getting there that's the problem. So they need to to get some speed, whether it's like clinging on to mechs or vehicles like, to be transported into battle. Um, or giving them the ability to force march and double their speed, um, or even just like increasing their movement by a couple hexes, you know, just so that they can get into battle and actually be effective. Now, there was a couple of really great suggestions, I gotta say. Uh, one person was saying, like, maybe use them as like infantry in buildings. So, like, if you're uh, passing by a certain building or whatever, there's a chance that you get swarmed by elementals, right? Oh, that was a pretty cool idea, right? So, like, um, in the random encounters in the city where you have the random chance that, uh, you know, enemy inf infantry platoons are going to spawn in buildings and stuff. Maybe make them elementals, like, so they actually can come out of the buildings and engage. That would be scary, because if, if you walk by a bunch of buildings and all of a sudden four yes. units of elementals came out and were, like, swarming your heavy units, yes, that could be really nasty, you know? Um, I don't think we can get up there. I don't think we have access to the... Are you serious? We don't have access to this hill. Um, I really want to engage these guys, but now I can't. I guess I could do the get up here and then do the one hex movement per turn. Let's try that and see what happens. If it ends up not working, then um, I don't know. I guess I'll pause the video while I go all the way around to engage these guys. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. And then, you know, if the if the enemy elementals are using the cling ability and they're clinging on to your units yes, and attacking, then, you know, mechs that have hands would have a greater chance to pull them off or do damage to them. Um, or maybe you could install, like, some kind of, like... Uh, EMP or like electricity device that would like you know shock them to get them off hey. you things like that right there's some all kinds of cool things that could be done now can I get I can't even get up there with careful maneuvers Ugh. all right guys well I'll see you in a minute Alright, just get to the top of the hill with some of our units here. So yeah, I don't know, like... At least those are some ideas for melee and for, um... Well, that's actually not bad in the Anubis. I think we'll go after the Anubis here. He's been using the enhanced LRMs on us, so let's just fire at him. Okay. Yeah, but I'd be interested to see what you what you guys think about it. I mean, I know the Rotex crew is going to do what they're going to do, and I'm I'm fine with that. But I mean, at least having the options in this setup to be able to turn off, um, like, infantry battle armor um, would be nice. And you know, I, I know it's way too much to ask to disable the melee system. Uh, it'll never happen. But if we had the option to be able to turn that on off on and off, I would do that too. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the whole idea behind, you know, battle mechs is not so much about, um, you know, you know, melee and fighting like that. It's like outfitting them with weapons and blasting each other. That would make the most sen most amount of sense to me. Because, I mean, honestly, if it was about melee, why wouldn't you just, like, you know, outfit a bunch of light mechs with, <laughs> turn them into, like, bullets, you know, and just use them to hunt down and knock down assault mechs like you you know you get super light uh mechs with like hardened armor right and some kind of like big spike on them and then just run them up the ass of an atlas I'm atlas okay. right but like could no. you imagine hitting the side of an atlas's leg with a uh, 20 ton mech with a spike sticking out of it and ramming it right through the I leg copy. and then this atlas having to try and walk around with this friggin thing stuck to it you know, and have the pilot just bail out right afterwards. It might you might think it's costly, but you know, spending a couple of a uh, couple of million on a 25 ton 
25 ton uh, spike mech to, to disable an atlas is well worth it. You know? Here we go. So that's just my opinion of melee in, in this situation. So I would disable melee completely. I know a lot of people really like it and that's fine. That's cool. I'm not, I'm not completely against melee. I'm just kind of against the way it's like implemented currently. So I didn't even like it that much in the original Battletech either. It needs to be one of those rare, like, last minute, like, oh shit, I got nothing else to do, right? Like, if a mech is, like, like overheating and it needs to cool down, then go ahead and melee, right? But if both mechs are moving, like, the chance that you're actually going to be able to punch or kick somebody, or even, like, charge and hit them, like... Like, if you were to miss, like, if you were in a 25-ton mech and you were, like, running up and bracing and then going to attack, like... Like, running up and going to attack a 100-ton mech and thinking that you're going to hit it and brace and be fine, you're insane. You know, at that at that kind of speed, you're going to do so much damage to yourself. And you might do a lot of damage to the mech, but because of its sheer weight... Like, have you ever seen how much damage a subcompact takes or a... Or, or a you know, a, a, even like a, let's say a pickup truck, you know, a well, um, a well, um, built pickup truck slamming into a, uh, um, you know, 18 wheeler, how much damage that thing is going to take, right? Firing. It would be the same thing. So, you know, a 20 ton max slamming into an assault mech is going to take way more damage than that assault mech ever would. Yes, come on, it doesn't matter how fast you're going. The faster you're going, the more damage you're going to take rather than the, uh, the go. truck, you know? Just because it's it's built differently, like the structure is so much stronger, the armor is so much stronger, and yours just isn't. It, you're just not. It's not your your um, your mech is just not built for that, right? On. Nice. Good shooting, Tex. Enemy down. So I mean that's I mean that's the big thing I got against charging. I liked it in the tabletop game. It was always cool, like you charge and. You know, you do double your... 20, I think it was like... Charge did 20% of your... 20% hey. of your weight in damage? Spread over... like In five point increments spread across... The, the I think it was the upper body of the enemy mech. So it was always good to charge them from behind if you could. But then it knocked them back one hex too, which was good, right? So, and then I think it's... It threw them off balance or it stopped their ability to to shoot or something. I can't remember what it did. It added a lot of advantage, so there was a good advantage to actually charging. And then punching and kicking. Um, those were always situational. Sometimes you would do it, sometimes you wouldn't, because you... You know, you're carrying more weapons and you have a better chance to do more damage if you just fire your weapons than punch or kick. So... Excellent. Yeah, I'm glad I put the Ultra 2 on that thing. Glad I put the Ultra 2 on that thing. Let's get in the trees. Same guy. Let's get this Anubis gone if we can. Ooh, two hits, man. I do okay with Cloud Busters. I'm not sure what it is about them, but... They're kind of a nice vehicle. Like, half-decent armor, half-decent firepower. The speed's mediocre, but it's still not bad. You've got range, which is another bonus. Like, you've got good distance, unless you get the double large laser version, which doesn't quite have as much range as the double AC5 version, but... I'd prefer for, like, our two Ultra 2s on there instead, but... You get what... I mean, you get what you get. Uh, let's not go all the way. I'm gonna move into the trees, though. Copy just that. in case that guy decides to use LRMs or something on us. Brace it up here. What now? What now? You're always complaining, just like me. No wonder you're on my team. Copy. And I, you know, I, I make these comments out of love for the game. Like, I really do love Rogue Tech. I, I mean, I, I'm sure you can tell. Maybe things are looking up. They did, they did make a lot of changes over Christmas time. Like, I know they were doing a lot of patching and alterations yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So... That's always a good thing. It almost seemed like, like they were making a couple of couple fixes every, like every day, which was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, this guy. Roger that. 
Yep. Inflicted some heavy now that we've got the uh, the targeting computer or the uh, optics, um, so the optic system Mark III, and the uh, fire control system Predator, this uh, Talos is actually doing really good at long distances. But the more that uh, the enemy uses charge attacks, the more I just like go. my meta just becomes long distance only. Like why close with these guys? If I if I know these guys are going to charge me, why would I close with them? There's just no point, right? I'll just shoot them from a distance until they're dead. Let's go after this guy. See if we can finish him off. All right, one hit, not bad. Yes, Commander. All right, buddy, let's get you up here. Got it, Commander. How are we doing armor-wise? Still pretty good. Yeah, see, I mean, this guy's got respectable armor, especially for like early to mid game. It's actually a really good, it's actually a really good vehicle. All right, where are you going? What do you have? You must have like a periphery, like periphery rifles or something. That's the quick sell version. Too ballistic. I'm interested to see what those are. I don't think I've ever seen Confirm. Commando with ballistic weapons before. Like maybe a machine gun or something, but like it can't be. Um, maybe it's an Ultra Two. That's a possibility. There we go. That's a kill. Not good for salvage, but it's good for a kill. All right, let's get in there. Can we, uh, we can't. That's not bad, Copy though. That. Yeah, see what I mean? It sounds like a vehicle. I mentioned this last episode. It almost sounds like there's a, it's a vehicle. Like, sound is, like, mixed in with everything else. Um, let's go all in this time. AC5 and two medium blazers. What's up, Mr. Clint? I'm just here to soften you up. No SRMs remaining. I'm ready. Now we can get up here. Confirmed. Just couldn't get up that ridge. Got it, Commander. Another hit, nice. What do you need? Granite. Get to right there. Don't shoot your own guy in the back, whatever you do. Ah, pretty good chances to hit. Well, we got four rounds left with the AC-5. Target confirmed. All right, another hit. I'm here. Don't go into the flames, please. Advancing, I guess. Don't guess, no. Do it, do it now. Did that say lower? It didn't say left arm destroyed. It said lower arm destroyed, right? He's going on 17. Let's see what he does. I don't think he's hit yet. So I have no idea what he's using. That's oh, probably jammed. Yes, Commander. Whatever it is, it's jammed. Not even gonna move. Let's stop this for a second. We'll get drop some recoil, I guess. Try this guy. Ooh, two hits. Nice. We pen the armor. Receive. Most likely CT. Let's move up a little bit. Acknowledged. Nope, torso, it's fine. Firing. Affirmative. Yes. I think I hit something good. I think you did too. On the move. I'm interested in, to know what that commando's got. Well, there goes all his weapons. There's the knockdown. Maybe he bails out. So he lost the torso. Oh, never mind. I was gonna try and figure out how many wounds he took, but it's really irrelevant. Not going through the fire, good. Okay, let's go. Ah, I missed my Ares. 
Well, we got the, we got parts sitting there, so all we got to do is find another area somewhere we can rebuild it. Move order received. I'd like to have, hopefully before the end of the series, both Zoria's and uh, the Ares back and working again. So it shouldn't take too long to get them all back. I got them. Nice. That Thunderbolt is hitting with a relatively, uh, relative, uh, relatively, relatively relative frequency. Oh, so he's got a, um, what? He's only got one weapon, so that fired cluster just then. I'm really interested to know what that weapon is. I really want to know what it is. Wait. So we got lucky with a bunch of these mechs. We could it could have been bad. I mean we've already seen what it's like to, when it's bad. Alright, firing on the side. Engaging. Wow. I think you need to back up. Maybe you're, maybe she's just getting exhausted. That's what it is. She's tired now. I sturm. Yeah, not getting much for that. Let's just switch to this. Do some more armor damage if we can. Firing. Oh, we got a leg hit. Nice. I'm receiving you. You know what to do. All go. Ooh, see ya. That's a kill. So you must have had like one of those discount uh, XL engines. Mission successful. Alright, so that wasn't too bad. 210,000 profit. Wait, we lost some because our friggin' <laughs> our, uh, I, I couldn't believe our own, um, uh, rescue guy <laughs> killed his own teammate. And I, I was shocked because I was like, I didn't look at how much armor our guys had, so I was like, yeah, if he gets hit with a SR, stray SRM, it's not gonna cause that much of an issue. Boy, was I wrong. Alright, so quick sell one. I mean, I'm going to put three of these in there for now. Ooh, the combat shotgun. Who had the combat shotgun? I wonder if that was underneath the Vindicator. Maybe it was the... It wasn't the Vindicator, I don't think. Let's throw it there for now. I don't think we have a mech heavy enough to be able to use it yet. So the one-shot sniper... Ooh, advanced zoom. I'm going to throw that in there. The one-shot sniper is an interesting... Weapon. Zero tons because it's a bolt-on. It's four ton handheld. That's it, eh? Four tons? Okay, I gotta also think about the Griffin though. He's coming Griffin's gonna be coming back and I gotta outfit it with something because I bulky endo steel. Um I gotta outfit it with something and I don't know what to outfit it with. Fire control system headshot. Fire control system ballistic. Oh man, there's a lot of good stuff here. I'm very tempted to just forget about the uh, Vindicator for now. It's got two ballistic and three lasers. That's not too bad. <clears throat> IFF jammer, which is nice. Um, spotlight with sensors. Viewmaster cockpit. Plus 80 meter base sight distance. Minus 66% armor points multiplier. So you lose 66% of your armor. But you gain an 80 meter. I don't understand. Is that head only? Like it must be only the head. Because why would you use that? It just probably means the cockpit's more open to the outside, which would make sense why you get a better sight distance, although it's not worth it. So large cam ammo, we've got three, so we could take... Where are you here? The large cam laser, 600 meter range, 36 heat. Does it have damage drop-off? Superior damage, I have minus one accuracy. 
I guess it doesn't have damage fall off. That's scary because the the um, the heavy the heavy what is it the heavy large laser or whatever it is, um, or the large heavy laser is four tons. Jacks up the heat, but it does, I believe it has damage fall off. So this is actually not bad at all. I'm gonna drop it there for now. I gotta think about still what we're gonna do with um, <clears throat> the Griffin. The great thing about the Griffin is that it's you know it's an Omni Mech, so I don't have to worry too much about fixing the internals. It's just the weapon systems. So maybe we do drop the Vindicator and grab some of this other stuff. Like, we, we can grab the e Angel ECM, which I would probably put in the Griffin. The One-Shot Sniper. I think that would definitely be worth it. I don't think we need endo, endo Steel. Well, we might. We just used up our last Endo on the uh, Holopolis. So maybe grabbing that wouldn't... Oh, the Ballistic Accuracy, though. This would go great on the um, Hunchback. You know what? Let's drop these. I think these three are a no-brainer. Those, th I mean, with the exception of Heavy Chem Laser, mm, you know, I could probably drop that and not worry too much about it. I think the Angel ECM is probably a good second round draft pick. It's two tons though, so maybe it's not worth it on the uh, Griffin. The Ballistic for sure, which will go on the Hunchback. And then... Ultralight gyro is generally no good because, I mean, if it's the only thing you have, great. But you take increased stability damage and your stability threshold drops by 10 points. So you really only have one and a half bars of stability, which is kind of sucky. Um, upper recoil too. Oh, man. I think we got to grab that as well. So this is 10% actuator weight. Three slots though. Minus one recoil. So this we could put on the um, the Talos. I think these this I think this is the smart. Oh, we also got weapon mount accuracy. Oh shit! What do I drop for that? The angel. See, this is so nice though. Because if, if I'm going to be relying on the Griffin being up close like it was before, then having the Angel would be a good deterrent for the enemy trying to actually engage with it. Also adding a couple of jump jets back into it wouldn't hurt. But then I'm like hurting for space for weapons, right? Because I don't have a lot of weight available on that thing. But having this... It doesn't replace, low, it does replace the lower arm actuator. So what does this replace then, the upper one? Side shoulder actu activator, actuator. So technically I could put both of these on one arm. Maybe. This is three slots, I'm not convinced that that would actually happen. This might use up the whole arm. But still though, having the bonus accuracy is really nice. I think that's... God, I want this too, though. So let's drop the angel. Ah, shit. Man, this is a tough choice. Um, the weapon mount, I think we have to take because I don't, I don't see these very often. We very rarely get these, right? The large chem laser, it seems to be... I mean, this is like the second time we've encountered it so far. So not, I mean, it's a little bit more common, I guess. Ah, oh, man, do we go without the ECM for now and just go with jump jets? I think so. I think we go without, this is an energy hard point. So this, I mean, we could put this on the Griffin too. You know what? Oh, it's minus one accuracy. So maybe we put this on the Griffin, but then put like an, put this uh, um, weapon mount on the arm. So it would be plus one to hit with this thing. 
plus be on the arm. Let's go this route and see what happens. The zoom Mark II, I think, is going to go on the, um, the hunchback as well because of the range. So let's do this. That's a good haul. For, for what we were facing, that's a pretty good haul. So the cattle master, no, I don't really want, but we'll tr end up trashing. Chameleon 50 tons, not so bad. Wow, four parts of the quick sell commando. That's interesting. Urban Mac, two parts of the vindicator, that's cool. Chaff countermeasure is always good. It's always good to have these little extra things that you can throw on there every once in a while. Large laser, small lasers, we have four. Mm, let's hold those for now. Bulky endo steel does what? Reduces the structure weight. 5% structure points. But it's got 22 fixed slots. Oh, that's actually not that bad. Just giving that 5% structure point increase and the weight change, that's actually pretty good. Especially if you've got a, a mech that's like like a lighter version with lots of slots that you just can't fill up with anything. Like an urban mech, let's say, <laughs> right? Not that I would put it on an Irby, but fire control system recoil. Minus three recoil with ranged weapons. Minus one accuracy, though. But if we're already getting accuracy negatives from recoil, this might mitigate the... Uh, the recoil completely on the uh, hunchback though hmm so this guy can go jump jet small light quick sell 0.25 three jump so it adds more heat but it's lighter that's kind of cool so some of the quick sell stuff is interesting some of it's like eh but some of it's pretty interesting. We had nothing really to sell there. That's actually pretty darn good haul. I'm actually shocked at how good this roll was. So, it's, you know, maybe luck is actually start starting to come our way. <laughs> I just jinxed it. Ooh, bonus reward. Hello. Eh, okay. Swarming cinderies. Well, sure. Why not? It's something anyway. 15 grand for repairs in four days. All right, so um, let me just think about this for a second. So I want to check out what we have mission-wise here to see if it's worth staying. Greetings, Commander. Come on in. So we got a, we got a two-skull ambush convoy that I may want to check because we have to start push, punching above our weight. Now that we've got some gear and better targeting, um, now we've got recoil compensation, you know. So I think we can start going up in weight class a little bit. Although, if this, this is against Rasselhag, then we can't take them. Local government. Um, this is against who? Local government. So we could take some of these guys, the Steiner ones. We won't take it against the, the against Rasselhag. So this is what? Recovery? In the desert? This one might be... It might be interesting to take this. If we can drop near where our extraction zone is and run the cephalus in, grab the shit and get out, that might actually work and then just pull down a few mechs that we want to keep and just bail out. So that's a possibility. So yeah, I think we're going to stay here. I'm going to fix up the griffin between episodes because I got a lot of playing to do with it, I think. Uh, pushing and pulling them stuff to figure out how we're going to get it to function and not be such a, a target. I think it's becoming a um, because it's moved trying to move in with the cephalus, and the cephalus really can't be hit easily. They're just targeting it instead. So if I can give it some jump jets to give it a bit bit of like that that mission when it went down, if it could have jumped up on that little rock rocky platform in front of it, um, dealt some damage, and then maybe jumped up on the hill or something, and got out of the way, then I think it would have definitely probably survived that last match. So I need to work on how I'm going to balance out the weapon systems on it. I think we're going to lose all the ammo. I think it's just probably going to be an energy build. We've got four energy hard points. I think we should be able to get something going. We've got three arm plus the center torso, I think. So I'll be figuring that out between episodes. And then when we come back, I'll show you what I've done. And then we'll take a mission. 
But I'm going to end this episode here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. You can also drop any comments in the comment section down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.